The senior drivers make their way out onto the circuit for their first heat, their first of three races today. All of these heats, the combined results will determine who starts on the front row of the grid, who starts where on the grid for the pre-final, the point scoring race tomorrow. That then determines the grid for the final, which is the major point scoring race. We've got Jess Batman on pole position. She was just one thousandth of a second clear of Nicholas Scholl in a very exciting qualifying session yesterday, which essentially became a one lap shootout with everybody leaving it pretty late until they went out in the seven minute session, the first two or three minutes of which nobody actually went on track. Row two, we've got Lars Lambrell, the Dutch driver, and Luke Kibbenet is the top Spanish driver looking for home success here in Suera. Our row three, Glenn Van Parish and Christopher Drace bring Christopher on the podium last time out in Italy, which put him up into the top ten in the championship. Row four, Berke Besler, who was successful here just a week ago because he was the winner of the X30 Euro Series race here and indeed of that entire championship. So Berke has stayed out here for a couple of weeks now, the Turkish driver with much familiarity, but of course getting used to different tyres that they run on these carts and the different engines as well. So he's there on the fourth row of the grid with Ruud Beidendijk alongside him, the Dutch driver, and then to complete the top ten, another Dutch driver, Kay Van Berlo, and the Frenchman, Thomas Drouet. I'm Chris Hartley. The carts are on their second formation lap now. It's going to be a nine-lap heat. And to remind you, Nicolas Scholl, the points leader at the halfway mark in the championship, Gary Donnelly. Second, Renus van Kamtu, third. And the driver on pole position, Jess Batman, is fourth in the championship standings coming into this weekend. Almost getting onto the podium in Italy with a fourth place finish. But she's had good consistency so far. She's a very experienced driver, sister of Andreas Batman. And uh, Jess telling me that coming up very soon, she's going to be making her debut in Rallycross. So that's her plan, really, is to do more Rallycross uh, events. It's a, a huge sport in uh, Sweden. Of course, you've got Matthias Ekstrom, the uh, double DTM champion, is also a rallycross star. You can drive pretty much anything, can uh, Eki, and uh, an inspiration for uh, many young Swedish drivers. So both Jess and uh, Andreas uh, getting into rallycross. Andreas has already had a go. Her brother, who is a Euro Challenge champion, is going to be coming back to have a go at the International Open uh, to try and get a ticket to the Grand Finals. Top three from the Championship go through to the Grand Finals by invitation. But if you don't do that, you can come back and have a go at the International Open, a one-off event held in October, run by RGMMC, and which runs for the second year running at the Adria Raceway in northern Italy. So the drivers making their way round for the rolling lap. Um, qualifying times were off a bit, really, because it was a bit of a squabble. It was a bit of a button fight with a, a, lap, a lap of session really remaining. And lots of drivers didn't really set a time uh, that they would have liked because um, they couldn't get the tyres fully up to temperature. They couldn't get a clean run. So it's a slightly jumbled up grid. But Jess Batman certainly deserving of her place for her first ever Euro Challenge pole position. And she said even her lap for pole, she was three tenths slower than she would have liked because she had to take evasive action with a spinner at the start of her lap. So she's in 226. 216 is Nicholas Scholl, the green and white suit. They are the front row starters and they are leading the seniors round, ready for our first senior race of the day here at Suera in Spain. Good start for Nicholas Scholl around the outside. He's going to try and keep that position, but they'll all swarm down the inside now once they get down towards turn two and hit the brakes. Jess Batman is going to lead the race. Nicholas Scholl is tr trying still to hang it around the outside, but Lou Loses momentum, loses grip coming out of the corner. And he was just about third at turn two. He's going to be, I think, down three or four places now. Jess Batman has done the ideal job from pole position. Good start, held her line, and she leads the race coming into turn four for the first time and starting to build up a bit of a cushion now. Lars Lambrell, who started also on the inside line from third on the grid, is the driver that's uh, had a good start as well and is there in second place. And then it's looking pretty tight for third position and fourth position. Uh, third place is Glenn Van Paris, another driver to come from the inside row. So the inside row starters, as you'd expect, really, all following suit down into turn two. And that top four now breaking away with Berke Besler, also on the inside row from the fourth row of the grid, getting fourth place. So first, third, fifth and seventh have become the top four. And those on the outside line have uh, dropped back a bit. Incidentally, watch for Gary Donnelly, who's on the outside of row six. He's second in the championship. Didn't have a great qualifying yesterday, but should be quick enough to come through the order if he can survive the first couple of laps of the race. Now, the top three bunch up together on the way into turn two for the first time. It's still Batman from Lamborell from uh, Van Paris, but Van Paris is looking menacing now. Down the inside, though, comes uh, Bezler for third place at the hairpin. So a new third place driver, the Turkish uh, superstar comes through into third. Fifth has caught them up as well now, and that's Nicholas Scholl. So Nicholas was fifth at the end of the first lap. I think he was sixth or seventh at one point uh, midway round the lap, but he uh, held in pretty well. 
Didn't go all that fast in, in practice, but he looked good in qualifying. He looks good in the race as he goes down the inside now and takes fourth position. But running wide and Glenn Van Parry's coming back at him into the right hander at turn seven. Sholo, the pinkish coloured helmet, holds on to fourth spot. So those two just battle away. It allows the top three to break clear. And we've got Jess Batman leading the way from Lars Lamberell. Third place, Berkey Besler. Fourth place now with that move, Nicholas Scholl. Fifth place, Glenn Van Paris. And then it's Luke Ibanez in sixth position. And having just dropped down to seventh place, Thomas Drouet, who's made a decent start from the fifth row of the grid, even though he was on the outside line. There's a move down into turn one. That might be Kane Van Berlin making a move. Christopher Dreispring is in the top ten as well. And... Who else we've got to look for? Luca Benez, Christopher Dracepring. Yeah, those two drivers who were on the outside uh, also dropping back a bit. And there at turn three, uh, we get Berke Besler now going into second place. So he moves uh, through. In fact, Batman's dropped back as well. Lamborell uh, is the one that's gone to the head of the group. Then it's Besler and then Batman down to third place now in the blink of an eye. So a new race leader on this lap. This is the third lap of the race. It's side by side just behind them as well for third place. And Nicholas Scholl squeezes through ahead of Jess Batman. So she's gone from first to fourth in about 15 seconds there. That's how ruthless it can be in kart racing. You've also got Glen Van Paris trying to have a move as well, but with a green helmet he stays behind now he goes for his move though down the inside and takes the position at the penultimate corner of the lap at turn nine so on that lap from fifth, first down to fifth place has gone the pole sitter jess batman over the line they come of course the disadvantage at the front is that you give a toe to everybody else but now perhaps jess can benefit from picking up a toe herself Okay, Bezler onto the tail of Lars Lambrell into turn number one and gets a good run through into turn three. He's going to go down the inside. He's going to make a clean move and he's going to get the lead of the race. Meanwhile, Nicholas Scholler set the fastest lap of the race. So Berke Besler leads now. Lambrell to second. Scholl with the fastest lap. Catching them up, though, in third place. Glenn Van Paris hanging on to him in fourth. Then it's Jess Batman in fifth. Uh, Thomas Drouet in sixth place. Luke Gibbonet in seventh. And up to uh, eighth place now has gone Jordan Brown Nutley. He's just gone ahead of Christopher Dreispring. But we've got, really, the top seven starting to form as one here. Eighth, ninth, and tenth in a little trio as well. And at the head of the field, Berke Besler will now try and get his head down and pull away from Lars Lamberell. There wasn't much between any of these drivers in qualifying. Nicholas Scholl, who has just got this way of coming back up the order. Sometimes he slips back at start. Sometimes you know, people overtake him, but he just keeps coming back. And he's still very much in the mix here. The strawberry racing driver in third place crosses the line. He's only two tenths of a second behind the race leader, who is now really having some strong pressure here from Lars Lambrell as they go into turn two. Gets a tidy exit through the little flat out left hand kink they go. And now here's a move from Lars Lambrell for the lead of the race into turn three. And he goes through. Successful move. So a new leader, Lambrell, becomes the latest to take a turn up front. Berke Besler second. Nicholas Scholl with them, though, in third place. Glenn Van Paris and Jess Batman have joined them back as well. Well, so the top five together, Thomas Drouet and Luke Ibanez just off that group in sixth and seventh places. And Jordan Brown Nutley, who's just set the fastest lap of the race, is catching everybody in eighth place. Berke Besler gets a good run going into the right-hander at turn seven and back into the lead of the race. Runs a bit deep into the corner. Lars Lambrell is delayed. That allows Nicholas Scholl to come onto his case. But Lars fends off the Austrian. So new leader, Berke Besler, back to the front of the field. Lambrell in second place. Scholl third. Fourth place for Van Par Paris, who's been back and forth a little bit with Jess Batman. And now sixth and seventh have caught them up as well. Drouet and Ibanez, the Frenchman and the Spaniard, make it seven for the lead of the race. Berke Besler leads. We're on to the sixth lap of nine now, coming up to two-thirds race distance. Lamborell hugging the inside line on the way into turn two. It keeps them all at bay, but it allows Berke Besler to get a better line through the corner, a better exit from the corner, and to extend his advantage. For the second lap running, Jordan Brown Nutley, number 252, gets the fastest lap of the race. And now he's gained several places. He's gone up to fourth position, so he quickly dispatches Drouet and Ibanez. And Brown Nutley going great guns here. Comes out of turn five, and his next target is to catch third place, Nicholas Scholl. There's the battle for second on the screens. The blue race suit is Lars Lamborell. And uh, Lars... The Dan Holland Racing driver running on the Alonso chassis with his work cut out here to keep the championship leader uh, behind him. And also, you've got Jordan Brand Nutley, who's the fastest man on the track at the moment, with them now. So second, third and fourth together. 
Bit of a gap back to Glenn Van Berlo and Jess Batman, who are now in fifth and sixth positions. Then you've got Luke Ibaneth, and you've got another four carts joining the party. So a great battle going on for fifth place. Here, though, comes Jordan Brown. Nutley pulls out of the slipstream, down the inside at turn one, and gains a place already. Didn't waste any time in going through. And that puts him into third place now. Brown Nutley's absolutely flying here. Next target, Lars Lambrell. He's picking them off one by one here and charging his way through the order. Jordan Brown Nutley doing some great work here. Remember, he started on the eighth row of the grid. So he started in 16th place. He's now up into the top three. And he's done this with great aplomb. He missed one of the rounds of the championship uh, this season. But you can drop one round. You can drop your worst pre-final and your worst final. So if he does this, does well. Does Salbury and goes well. He's uh, still going to be right up there in the championship. Maybe not battling for the overall title, but certainly he'll be well up in the top ten. But uh, he's just taking one race at a time. You look at our race leader, though, Burke Besler, who suddenly is a second clear of this tussle that we've got going on for second place. Second, third, fourth. There they are. Make their way out of the last turn. Seven of the nine laps complete. Two to go. And Jordan Brown Nutley has almost caught on to the tail of Lars Lamborel. Now he's close enough to pick up a toe coming through turn one. Will he have a go into turn two? Yes, of course he will. Down the inside he goes. Ruthless, calculated and very, very good driving from Jordan Brown Nutley. That was the ideal move. He committed himself, but it was uh, all very clean and tidy. And he's doing all these overtaking moves without really costing himself any time. He's keeping up his momentum coming out of the corners as well. It's a very impressive drive, this, from Jordan Brown Nutley. Up to second place. Lap and a half. Could he do the impossible and catch the race leader here, Burke Besler, who's had things his own way for the last two or three laps. Jordan Brown Nutley. It's going to take some stopping, that's for sure. Lars Lamborell is going to try and go with him. Nicholas Scholl is still on the tail of that group in fourth place. Fifth one on his own now is Glenn Van Paris. Jess Batman has just dropped several places down the order, I'm afraid, out of 14th place. Uh, so the pole sitter, uh, it started well, but it's all gone wrong, I'm afraid, in the second half of the race for Jess. But she will get pole and two more attempts today. So Ibanez is up to sixth, Drew is up to seventh place, Gary Donnelly up to eighth place, Jack McCarthy's come up to ninth, and Josh White is uh, into the top ten now as well. As we go on to the final lap of the race, the gap from first to second comes down by two tenths to seven tenths of a second. So Jordan Brown Nutley with a 64.3 has just set another fastest lap of the race. That's three fastest laps of the race now for Jordan Brown Nutley. And I'm sure on two of those laps, he was busy overtaking as well. So it's uh, pretty impressive stuff. But of course, those behind can follow him now, can follow his lines, can pick up his toe. And he certainly hasn't got rid of Lars Lamborell, nor has he got rid of Nicolas Scholl. There's the gap then from first to second. Burke Besler looking smooth and controlled. And uh, he's always had the speed. But goodness me, he's got the whole package now as Burke Besler. He just looks in control of everything all the time. He picks off his moves, but he's also a very patient driver these days. And he's doing a super job. He's going to be one of the favourites this weekend, no doubt about it. He comes into the last corner. He's going to lead the race, but the driver of the race is surely Jordan Brown Nutley from 16th on the grid to second. Fantastic stuff. The checker flag comes out. Besler wins. Brown Nutley second. Lamborell third. Nicholas Scholl fourth. Stem Van Paris in fifth place. And what about six? Here they come. Luke Ibanez just about takes sixth place by 20 thousandths of a second from Gary Donnelly, who gained five places in the end to finish seventh. Josh White made up a couple at the uh, last lap to go eighth. Tom Adre down to ninth place. And Jack McCarthy rounding out the top ten just ahead of Christopher Dre Spring and Dennis Mavlinov. Dennis, very quick this weekend, but an awful qualifying session. And he has gained 14 places. We didn't really talk about Dennis, but the Russian driver with a great driver as well to get from 26th up to 12th place. The race winner, though, by six tenths of a second, Burke Besler for Bouvon Power. Uh, Jordan Brown Nutley and his Dan Holland racing teammate, Lars Lambrell, second and third. Nicholas Scholl for Strawberry, fourth. Glenn Van Paris for Bouvon Power in fifth. And Luke Ibanez for Binnacart completing the top six. There you can see on screen. The rest of the finishers, Rinus van Kalmtoot, uh, perhaps a little bit disappointed down in 14th place. He lost uh, some positions in that race. And Jess Batman, I'm afraid, uh, tumbling down the order in the end to finish down in 23rd place. So she'll need a good race next time out from pole position. Bad luck as well for Jonathan Hoggard, who's been quick this weekend. Uh, didn't finish that race and has had a lowly grid position to deal with. So Jonathan, uh, his results not really reflecting his pace so far here. That's where, but a great win for Burke Besler.